work. You have to give me the question, yes. The idea that you don't know anything, not anything, but you don't have too much information about this. So I want you to bring it up. And then after that, we'll do a mini training. So we have a policeman here, we have a lawyer, and we have a doctor here. I'll talk to you about this issue and how the other various professionals will deal with these issues when they come to them. After that, we'll play a short, short film for you that we have done about this. And then we'll answer another question here for you. This time we'll be answering based on the knowledge of what you have learned from the trainers. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so it's very exciting. No boring stuff, okay? Right, so let's go. I learned some of you were also giving the definition of the bridge and then you know so that when you possibly have a kind of person with or without permission, and if that permission is also obtained by fraud. You know when they say permission is obtained by fraud. Are you are we too fast? No. Okay. When they say a permission is obtained by fraud, that is possibly when you threaten that person. You threaten that person either with a knife or any kind of instrument, or even someone can use a toy gun to force that person by forcing the person to have kind of knowledge. When you say having kind of knowledge, having sex with that person, or lawfully forcing that person, that is when you say having kind of knowledge. And um, as a law officer, what we do is when we when such cases are reported. The first thing we do is to make sure that um, the survivor, because we don't normally use victims, victims, the data, we use survivor. What we do to the survivor, that is the person that was raped or that was sexually abused. So, what we normally do is the first thing is we give the person uh, medical attention first. Are you with me? Medical attention is very, very important. The first thing. Because going to medical attention, the person will be examined by a doctor. And once the person is examined by the doctor, it is the doctor that will be able to confirm to us what has actually gone on. This person has been molested, or this person there was a penetration, or this person was, uh, was roughly uh, handled. So it's based on that doctor's report, and the doctor will be able to analyze what we have observed. So based on that doctor's report, the report will be brought back to the police and the police will analyze and make sure that another thing is the police will also go to the scene of crime where that crime was committed. Possibly if we are likely going to recover any evidence. Possibly what are the evidence you are looking for? You may get there to the tall and or any you understand anything that will show that Actually, the crime that has been committed at this particular scene. Then, going to that report, if it is established that that person has been raped or molested or any other sexually, um, um, sexually abused on, on that particular survivor, then the next thing is to go for the arrest of that person. And based on the reports, the next thing is after arrest. We will take the person's statements. After taking the both statements, then we will do what? The next thing is to prosecute. The next thing is to do what? Prosecute. So, there are different stages. The stages are one. The person is maybe there's an attempted rape or there's a rape. And after the rape, we take the survivor to the hospital for doctors and analysis and also confirm that this person has been raped. Then the next is to arrest the victim, I mean to arrest the suspects. After arresting the suspects, the suspect statement, then the suspects will be prosecuted. And I also want you to know that uh, you know that rape is also a felonious offense. Do you can tell me the meaning of felony? Yes, felony. That's a very good one. He said felony is the crime that was committed against the law of the country. Yes. Any other person? You know, there are some offenses that are very simple in nature. And there are some offenses that are felonious in nature. Those are the felonious offense in nature. One, you know that such a person will not be granted bail. And two, such a crime 
there are claims that um, even after prosecution, it, um, the person will be sentenced to prison for nothing less than 15 years imprisonment. For instance, a girl was being raped. She didn't see the person's face. And she doesn't see the person. So how would they trace that person? What do you mean? What do you mean? For instance, a girl was being raped. Yes. And she didn't see the person's face. Okay. She didn't see the person's face. Okay, good question. Let's back to her. The truth is that um, for every crime committed, they cannot be a perfect crime. There will always be what? The truth. There will always be a mistake from the perpetrator. Possibly in the course of a uh, they will be struggling between the two. If possibly that person is wearing a chain or a wristwatch or even within the scene, in the scene of crime. That is why in my analysis I said the first thing to do is to what take the survivor to the hospital for analysis and then possibly if uh, it is made in the modern world, there's what we call forensic analysis. In the course of the crime of the rape, the person's um, semen um, taken and possibly um, even in the course of the rape we have what we call the hair. There will also be hair. These are the things they will uh, possibly uh, take as samples. And once that is taken, the next is to do forensic analysis. When you do the forensic analysis, it will bring out um, if, if uh, like I have said, here you have the evidence of virtually everybody, it will naturally bring out the person's picture and the person's address. But in our own case, what we we'll do is that um, after uh, the analysis and uh, the reports are been given, is to come on that place, see if at all there's going to be any evidence at all. We find out the investigation. Of course, within the area, there will always be somebody who there will always be, you know, if you are kind of making um, that is why once a crime is committed at times in an area, police will call on the area, arrest whoever is within that area, and because of the arrest, the arrest is not to um withdraw anybody, but supposedly to amass the person that's actually committed that crime. And while questioning from party A, B, C, maybe for example, 10 people are arrested, you ask questions from 10 of them, they will give you different statements. And that statement can lead you to whoever has committed that crime. If uh, in the course of the rain, too, um, the person eventually leads to deaths, but before deaths, possibly the person must have been rushed to the hospital. There's what we also call the direct declaration. Before the person dies, the person can say his last word and say, so something, so something happened. So you now rely on that statement of the person, which we call the dying declaration. Are you with me? Based on that dying declaration, is the last statement the person is giving. Which, of course, we know that somebody who is dying and not just lie. He's saying that statement as the last statement for being on earth. So you rely on that statement and can say, even before the person dies, it's also person that actually did this to me. Or so, so person did this to me. Of course, you rely on that uh, statement. People in court is admissible. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, another question. Yes, it's always good, you know. It is always good once a survivor and uh, once such a thing happens. Instead of the survivor going to the hospital in herself, the best thing is to be accompanied by a police officer. Because the hospital you will go to, you know, in court, they will not, um, uh, the ordinary hospital, they are, they are just uh, medical uh, reports will not be accessible in court. Because uh, court believes in government hospital, which they believe that that can be tampered with, you know, in a private hospital. It may be, in the case of your personal hospital, you might have reduced your uh, doctor, or you might have a uh, coerced them, or you might have a uh, 
they will find a way to not be there to, to do the report in your favor. But they believe in general hospital, if I'm not, they will give you the report as it is. They believe they will give you a fair report. The truth is that um, before, you know, we used to have um, some of these things when the survivor is taken to the police, the police then will say, hey, you, you don't enjoy them. You uh, look at what you're with, why did you wear it? Why did they fly? You don't enjoy them. How many times you go? You know that kind of a thing. But the truth is that um, we have been trying as much as we have gone around some of the divisions to train police officers. So far, so good. We've trained about, uh, we've gone to about 13 states command and we've trained people on how to handle some of these cases. Because the training is still on. Because as I'm talking to you, I'm traveling very soon by Friday. I'll be traveling out of the country. But when I'm back again, I'm going to call about the same training again. We still train police officers in uh, in Obuja, in Calabar. So this training is going on, and in some cases, when you see police doing that, please we'll give you a number. Always reports. Always report. And that is why what our um, this agenda has done since our arrival in the country. She has tried as much as possible to make sure that in every police station there are specialized people. We have a specialized desk that handles such cases, not just any police officers. Normally, when you get to counter, you see it because you see any police officer, they might just assign any police officer to handle such cases. Or the CRO, we used to call them CRO, yeah? they are counter duty officers. And what we do, they call them crime recorder. What they do is that uh, once cases come, they are the ones that will receive these cases and they are the ones that are victims of that, they are the ones that are um, majorly committing these uh, uh, errors by saying you, what do you get? Because they are the ones that will receive the case and now refer those cases to the department or to the unit to handle that um, case. So we are doing the sensation is still going on, and I'm sure that um, um, now it's even better. We don't see such a thing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So my name is Jomi, and um, I'm going to be speaking with you of something from the legal aspect, but just general information, because I guess that a lot of the time we're concerning with the, uh, the information is always intertwined, because you know, I hear the same things so when we jump on, we hear all the same things so from a in, in, in police officers, and you might hear the same thing from the counselor. So, I'm not going to say anything so different from what you might already know. But I just want to ask one quick question What do you think is the cause for rape or the reason for rape? As in, just anything that you think about, what do you think causes rape? Anyone here? Yeah. What you say? Okay. Um, Hatred, yeah. What else? What else? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Living in the Okay. Living in the Yes. Anger. Okay. Not parental care, yeah? What? Frustration. Okay, yes. Revenge. Okay. Carelessness. Carelessness from. Okay. Yes. Lack of self control, yes. What? Sexual urge, yes. Mental illness of the effect, yes. Curiosity, yes. Something. What? Thinking of hard drugs. Thinking of hard drugs, yes. What? Pleasure. So I've named different causes for at this rate. Now let me just say this, and no one is wrong because those are the ideas that you have about what you think is the reason for rape or what causes rape. But let me say this, you are supposed to dress this and you are just, not because you are trying to avoid being raped. There are people that are fully clad when you are in jail, they will still rape you. Because a lot of the time when they say, oh someone was raped, we tend to ask, what was the best you doing? Where was the best you You go out to meet at night, am I allowed to go where I want to go? and still stay wherever I'm going This again does not mean that you don't take care of yourself or you don't make sure that you're being careful about the places you go to. What I'm just saying is that we should never get tempted to blame the person that's being raped, that has been raped, as opposed to 
which is the victim as opposed to the person who has raped. Do we understand? Yes. Now, again, can someone just give me a random explanation of what rape is? What should it be? Just one person. Yes, then what, what is rape? Yes.
seek it in the office too. And then at the office, all the steps I mentioned will be at the Timing too is very, very important because we live for so long. Say, for example, evidence will be not so potent to you. So make sure that you're doing this in a timely manner. If you have to talk to someone and then you take it straight to the hospital for treatment. And then, um, she also talked about scratches, bruises, all that stuff. We checked for the hospital and treatment. And then, um, pregnancy as well. They will check if you use the pregnancy. It's not outcome. And then, she said the best time to check for infections are two to three weeks. So you know the symptoms just come immediately. So we will wait for that. So we have to go back to the hospital after two or three weeks to check if you have any of those um, sexually transmitted diseases, and then we can talk about So you have, they have different functions. They want to talk. They have psychology and have talk. Take you through the whole process. You know something that the doctor can do. Be your trusted friend that you can do. You tell them, tell them everything about what happens to you. Boy is already scorned. He grows up to play owner to a self esteem that is totally marred. Far from repairs and unlike his peers, he's hunted. But these recoming images that are so hard to discard. We tell him, shh, men are strong here. You cannot show you are hot or it will be evidence that you do not belong here. Your eye cannot tear. And you cannot tell about your pain. That is for women, my dear. And she, she knows, you know, these rooms, for she stones that these clothes that cover her up must be carefully picked. Otherwise, as she struts, her body may cause the interest of pregnancy to be sensual picked. How does she live and love this body of hers that has been forcefully defiled? What if her attacker totally denies? How does she speak of these plights? How does she ever feel safe on these streets without her skin feeling the effect of so many piercing eyes? We tell her, shh. Society is tired of incessant whining from females that had no proof. It could just be some gender fighting. Keep your pain to yourself. We have other business to be minding. How do we tell who is being revealed from who is lying? Those lips sealed. Let's hear cause your voice box to be made. Let it render your tongue lame. So it doesn't walk around these places telling stories of your trivial pain. But I wish these words of mine would break the locks on many mouths. So they speak not in whispers, but they speak really loud. So they once again stand up really proud. But an evil perpetrated by other persons in no way makes you less deserving, so no more condescend. Thoughts about yourself. Speak those things they said you can't bear at all, for this is the key to your freedom. And you had better and better free yourself. I felt confused, ashamed, and afraid. I couldn't understand why I didn't know or why this was happening to me. But I was lucky because I heard about the changing of our free child help line. I called, and the helpline counselor listened and gave me the guidance, support, and courage I needed. The caring people at the Child Advocacy Center in Lagos welcomed my mom and I and helped me to understand the rules, how to stop it, and how to begin to heal. They also made sure that I obtained justice. The Cheche Yara Foundation has provided assistance to thousands of children who have been abused or at risk. The foundation helps brave child survivors like me become children again. Call the Free Child Helpline or visit the Child Advocacy Center to obtain the healing and justice that every abused child deserves. So, remember what I told you guys? 
My name is Sani Mati Manuela and I'm in SS3B. I'm a student of the Dutch Child Model School. So it's everywhere, from my parents, from school, from television, from friends. I also hear it from my siblings. Maybe they talk about it from a friend that it happened about. Or my friends around. I heard it from like two of my friends, like a girl and a boy who were sexually abused when they were little. And also my dad also advised me to be careful, or if not, I might fall victim of being a raped person. I learned how to be secure. And because to be sincere, I was trained by only my dad. So I did not have actually have that full information about how to be secure as a girl. Because he's a man, how would they be able to teach you about what a girl can do? So today I actually learned how to be protected and secure and how to maintain myself so as to for me and even if you are a victim of it, you may be able to console yourself and be able to speak out. Don't be a single person. My name is Valerie Michelle and I attend to touch up with else who are SS3. Well I've heard about what from family, friends, I've heard about what sports and things have been but I didn't really have much information and much understanding. I figured out like if someone has been raped, the first thing someone has to do is go to the police station because somebody else actually feels like they eventually I want before my friend gets raped. What should I do? Or should I just take care of the person like it's okay, it's okay? But now I know the first thing to take the person to the police station, get medical checkups to make sure my friend is okay, and then track the person down. And I know that's what we're talking about. First thing to do is just go to the police station.